Donc, les amis, dans notre réunion, dans notre loco, les valets sont les membres. Nous avons dit que nous allons nous donner un bon débat. Nous avons dit que nous avons un bon débat. Nous avons dit que nous sommes ici maintenant. Nous parlons par votre téléphone. Et ils ne vont pas dire que nous ne sommes pas les policiers. Ils ne vont pas dire que nous ne sommes pas les policiers. Just be an arrangement between us and the family. I want to tell them. We don't let you go and inform the security. So it became a problem of uh, uh, take and uh, give. You know, if uh, we would we release your men, they release their they 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 got hold of their leaders. We release your men and. We visit your people. We manage to. Then they now, when you say, okay, if you go, they now withdraw. The wall withdraw. And then they uh, were going. You look, uh, later, three of them join us. They have already removed their their uniform. I think they even kept their guns, they even kept them somewhere else. And they don't wear, they don't wear any guns again. We now join. It is the road to to Giri. We stay this way. The academic staff of the University of Abuja, who were abducted by bandits on the 2nd of November 2021, in an interview with Ruth TV Nigeria, have narrated their ordeal while in the den of their kidnappers. It will be recalled that the gunman has stormed the university staff quarters in Giri, Gogolada Area Council of the FCT, and abducted the six victims, including their children, in the early hours of Tuesday. It's towards this bushy area. So if you move up and you enter this bush, getting up there, you see a, a net fence. So I think that they tore the net defense. They tore it, yes. So we were able to go to the it outside into the main bush. And from there we went upwards. We went up for like some meters. Then we crossed the road. Then we crossed the road. We had we entered the main forest. How many are there? We were about uh, more than twenty that came. Professor Joseph Obansa, one of the victims who was abducted with one of his children while sharing his experience, narrated the pain he went through in the hands of the gunmen, adding that he had lost hope of leaving the forest alive before they were miraculously released. The Deputy Registry of the Institution, Sambo Mohamed, while reacting to the release of the victims, revealed the identity of their abductors, adding that they were released with the efforts of the university management alongside security operatives. They, they were hired from Zampara State because they came from Zampara, according to one of them, because I interacted with them. They speak Hausa. I have more the people that were kidnapped. I'm the only person that speak Hausa. So the, that opportunity gave me, uh, th that thing gave me an opportunity to interact with them. So we talk. As we are talking, we became close to some of them. So from my understanding, one, they have some sponsors. They are not on their own. This operation they undertook, there are people that sponsor them, direct them, lead them to this place. So they are moving to their place. So the main issue is that they don't stay here and they don't stay. One of them told me they operate from here, they will move to Kano, they move to Katsina because they push them from Zampara to Kaduna. So there is no network. So the easiest way is to come to this area because where network is available, we are able to be rescued at no cost because nothing was paid to them. So sincerely I want to express our happiness to the management of the University of Abuja, particularly the Vice Chancellor, then the Director of State Services, the DSS, the Nigerian military, the Nigeria police and the vigilante because they made frantic effort. As when we are relieved, uh, released around 1 a.m. on Friday, we find our way I met these people in the bush waiting to receive us. Obansa said the abductors had demanded a sum of 300 million naira ransom before the victims could be released, but later became angry after receiving a report that one of them had been arrested by the police, adding that the development had heightened tensions as the kidnappers threatened to kill them or if their leader was not released. 
that uh, is that the, that uh, our, this issue is all over the place, all over the media that media is carrying it. Okay. Now they took us to one place where there was water to give us a, a soaked garlic. I add your poor sugar on it and then mix it and give us a drink. That was the eh? That was the that's, that's it first in that night. So around 3 a.m. that night on that first day. So we got there. We drank uh, water. They now ask me, what's my profession? And I'm a teacher. When we have true with that, uh, the, the incident there, they took us back. We go on that journey, another five hours journey to this Kaduna is Kaduna State, another five hours journey. Then when we got to a place, then we should sit down and rest, sit down and rest, and then rested for about time. One of them came to me. He said, "Is that a liar?" I'm not a liar. How? You told me that you are a teacher. I said, yes, I'm, I am. I'm not a professor. Uh, a professor is a teacher. Yeah. Eh? You ask me what am I? I tell me I'm teaching. A professor is a teacher. Eh? Even I would ask me about my rank. Eh? So uh, it's okay. Nah. Is there was the phone number of your wife? And I cannot remember. Others could give them phone number. We have to phone our, our wives, that spouses, that they, they, they need money. That the money they need now. Initially they say it's 25 million per person. They now raise it to 50 million per person. Professor Obansa claimed in his interview with Roots TV that some money was brought to their abductors, which they claimed was insufficient for their release before later demanding a swap deal for their leader who was in the police custody. He claimed the security operatives later successfully negotiated the swap deal, which eventually led to their release. I think they started having problems with uh, our people. They brought some more money to them. They are not too small. They don't, they don't, that, uh, go and look for money. Or they, want us to, they want to finish us here. Go and look for money. I, they didn't tell us how much they brought to them. Yeah. I thought they would, I thought they would have come with uh, ten million, and they were looking for more more millions. So the when they okay, they are having now telling us that look, they have arrested some of their members. We told you that you not allow, you not tell anybody about the. Uh, but we didn't tell anybody. We would tell them that they should, we are here now. You, we we talk through your phone, and they should not uh, tell anybody. They shouldn't, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't tell the police uh, that uh, about it. Uh, there will be an arrangement between us and the family. I want to tell them. We tell them to go and they inform the security. So it became a problem of uh, uh, take and uh, give. You know, if. Uh, we are able to we release your men. They release their, their, they, they, they got hold of their ringleaders. We release your men and we release your people. Denying these claims, however, the FCT Police Public Relations Officer, DSP Ade Josephine, in a phone conversation with Ritz TV Nigeria, debunked this claim, stating that eight suspects were arrested and no ransom was paid for the release of the abductees. Also, the deputy registrar of the institution, who was also a part of the victims, stated that their release was as a result of security tactics used by the operators to lure the kidnappers. When the interaction was going on, nothing was paid to them. They were saying that they should bring their people to swap. But we know, I spoke with the intelligent man that was holding some of the people that were arrested, and I gave, gave him our names. I think what they did, they used their intelligence security intelligence to, to lure them to release us. But this morning when I came, I confirmed from one of them that they have not released those people. They are still with them. That is the fact. But we are released. What they did to ensure that we are safely released. 
So they have to drag them, drag the security tactics. But I don't think they have really them. They are still with them. That is what I'm sure. He further stated that it is imperative for the government to ensure this recent threat of banditry and kidnapping does not envelop the nation's capital as it currently threatens to. They were demanding 300 million and nothing was paid to them. And I bet you if they have, were able to get anything from this oppression, the resident of this estate, the resident of Guagwala will have been in danger. And the government, what they did, they should take this as a litmus. Not to allow this thing to happen within the... If it comes to FCT, it's going to be a serious issue. So they should make, take a frantic effort to see that this thing has been curtailed and prevented, not to separate to all other parts of the FCT. There are routes, and they said they don't follow no more routes. So the government should find this and information. They should find a way how to checkmate those routes. Where they, this is a simple way. And those who they arrested, they let them interrogate them get all the necessary information from them to enable them to take necessary action about the incident. Narrating his experience in the kidnappers' den, Professor Obansa said they were made to trek for hours without proper food and water. At around 5 a.m., we should, we should uh, stand up, then moving us to another place again. We move to another place, we cross river, Cross from P areas and then we got back to a different uh, area. And now, as we are coming, they now put us on my hands. And then, uh, very early in the morning, got there in the morning, around uh, 6 a.m., got there, they put the hands. That's the hand that they, they now roasted all of us to eat. They too also eat. They will eat when they will now send a remnant to us to eat. Because to them, we are no more human, no more human beings. Mm. So, they say, okay, then we should chop. Open your eyes and chop. They, they were open and start chopping. Unfortunately, this was my son. He didn't know that uh, after chopping, I have to close back the eyes. He left his eyes without. Then all of them got a very good cane and uh, gave him. Maybe that's the tea that they were uh, And gave him a better, a better treatment of his life.